I thought I'd take the time to talk about sun, what it takes to understand sun, in three easy steps. And so this video blog, my first, is designed to really walk folks through where we're headed. We're approaching the end of the fiscal year, and given all the swirl in the economy, I thought it worthwhile to restate where Sun's headed as a company and to let customers, partners, employees, and investors all see and understand where we're going. Clarity is always useful, doubly so in times of uncertainty. Now let me start by joining the chorus of those worried about the global economy. I'm routinely talking to customers now partially owned by governments whose share prices have declined 95% or more, whose balance sheets and basic business models are under extraordinary duress. And like every business, our health is a derivative of our customers, and to that end, we've got our challenges. Sure, innovation loves a crisis, but only after customers have stepped out from under their desks. The glass isn't only half empty, though. I'm also seeing and talking to customers who've never had it better, from media startups and telecommunications giants to government agencies flush with new funding. But they're certainly a cheerful minority. Sun is privileged to have an exceptionally strong balance sheet. We've got over $3 billion in cash and a nearly two-decade history of generating positive cash flow. We've also got a set of technologies and people that continue to play an ever more vital role in the economy. Sun's products help companies grow, and we help companies consolidate. Um, they also help governments stimulate the economy as well. From building bridges to automating healthcare, government stimulus will undoubtedly drive technology investment, and we're well positioned to participate globally. Which is all to say, I'm neither worried about the role information technology will play in the economy, nor am I worried about the relevance of Sun's offerings. That is, I'm not worried about the future, I'm focused on its arrival date. So I'm going to divide my comments on Sun's future into three or four blog entries, of which, is, of which this is the first. You're going to see an accelerating series of announcements over the coming year, from amplifying our open source storage offerings to building out an equivalent portfolio of products in the networking space, from the addition of new and potentially surprising Solaris and MySQL and Java OEMs to our newest cloud offerings and startup programs. I want to put all of these announcements in context to be as clear as possible about our priorities and our market approach and help everyone understand both the parts and the sum of the parts. So let's get on with it. In my view, we have a very simple business. And when I talk about Sun, I talk about us needing to do only three things. Number one, recruit every developer on Earth to use our software or services. This is a strategic activity, not a financial one. So don't look for revenue here. I'll devote an entire entry to understanding the motivations and mechanisms driving technology adoption and to discussing the varied audiences we target across the world. As the head of developer technologies from a very large customer said to me last week over dinner, I haven't visited Sun in five years, but all of a sudden you seem to matter to my developers. So that's good news. I'll help parse that statement in my next entry. Number two, deliver the world's most compelling commercial offerings. Focus primarily, but not exclusively, on deployers of the technologies whose adoption we're driving. Our software and service products target those that find free to be a more expensive alternative than commercially supported, for whom the cost of downtime exceeds the price of a commercial license. That's a small fraction of the planet we recognize, but it's also a very lucrative one. And on the system side of the house, our products reach across rack and blade servers, storage and networking systems, basically everything to power the cloud, and people always pay for the hardware. The system's products are not free. I'll talk about the reliance this business has on developers to drive differentiation and gross margin dollars and the competitive advantage such a reliance creates as we broaden our market offerings into storage and networking. Number three, we have to execute uh, to build the world's most effective selling and service connection between the first and second imperatives. Now, I spend a lot of time talking publicly about these first two points, adoption and monetization, and very little time talking about this last point, the connection between adoption and revenue, in part because it's been a work in progress and because the scale of our sales and service channel has been one of our biggest strategic challenges. But the ordering matters. Our first financial priority is certainly to generate free cash flow. Our first strategic priority is to grow our available market. When those two are in sync, as I believe we are now in our open storage business, you have to beat us in the free software community and then again in front of paying customers. And that's a tough combination, especially if you're a proprietary vendor that pretends to like free software so long as it doesn't compete with your products. Now, as you know, simplicity takes a lot of engineering. And as someone pointed out to me recently, writing a short blog takes a lot more effort than writing a long blog. So I'll apologize in advance for the lengths of this. 
but it's easy to say just three things, and by saying that, I'm not in any way suggesting these tasks are easily accomplished. Our intent is to create, promote, and commercialize the highest quality network innovations, innovations that captivate developers and captivate deployers. So to understand Sun, you have to understand both sides. You have to see what drives our financial performance as well as read our financial statements. Absent both perspectives, you'll miss the bigger picture, the bigger threat, or the bigger opportunity. So with this as a backdrop, you should expect me to focus on the points I enumerate above in the next few blog entries, focusing on today's market and somewhat independent of the economic slowdown on tomorrow's. So thanks for watching this video, thanks for reading the blog, and stay tuned.